welcome you all today's topic is uh, PNH which stands for paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria now this is a quick review series so we will only covering the important aspects which are asked in need PG exam so let us start with it if you like our channel do subscribe to it click on the bell button so that you get regular notification now this is an acquired disorder okay so it is an acquired disorder of red blood cell or what we ca call it as RBC so it is an acquired RBC defect usually it is an intracellular disorder and at which stage it has been acquired in erythropoiesis it is acquired at stem cell level so they can ask you whether PNH is congenital or acquired so answer is acquired it is affecting which level in erythropoiesis stem cell level and what does it do it increases the sensitivity of RBC membrane to the complements uh, so RBCs are more liable to be destroyed by complement easily so I think this uh, up to this much it is very clear it is an acquired St RBC defect at the stem cell level which increases the sensitivity of RBC to complement let us move ahead now why it is called PNH or why it is called paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria now before that we have to understand the concept the concept is that that whenever it, uh, there is an acidic pH or acidification uh, that will uh, lead to complement activity enhancement against RBC so acidification will increase or enhances the activity of complement that is the concept to be remember now let us now see why it is known as PNH now what happens that in this patient during night time when they go to sleep and that's why it is known as nocturnal okay because it happens uh, in the night okay so during night or uh, at a time when person is sleeping there will be acidosis and this acidosis will increase uh, the complement activity and this complement will now destroy the RBC so there is a complement mediated destruction of uh, RBC which are already oversensitive to the complement action and this will lead to episodes or bouts or what you know as paroxysms of hemoglobinuria now when hemoglobin will appear in urine it usually uh, gives urine a color uh, that is brown in uh, nature so when a person wakes up in the morning uh, that person will have brown colored urine in the morning so why it is called PNH because during night time the acid acidosis develops and that will increase the complement mediated destruction of RBC and that leads to hemoglobin urea so next is <coughs> what are the three common manifestations uh, that uh, you can see in case of uh, PNH so the first one is uh, hemolytic anemia obviously there is a destruction of RBC and that will lead to hemolysis and that will lead to anemia and this is a complement mediated destruction 
uh, as earlier i have told you that will lead to hemoglobin free hemoglobin to appear in blood that is hemoglobinemia free hemoglobin to appear in urine that is hemoglobin urea sometimes the hemocyte rain will develop due to uh, the iron and that can also its level goes up and it can also be seen in urine hemosiderin in urea due to destruction of rbc the intracellular ldh enzyme now comes into serum so serum ldh levels are also high uh, when you do peripheral smear examination the uh, volume as well as the uh, hemoglobin content of rbc is not changed so it is a normochromic normocytic uh, rbc so the second manifestation which is commonly seen in pnh is venous thrombosis it, uh, there is a activation of uh, complement in pnh and that will indirectly stimulate the platelet especially the aggregation portion so the activation of complement indirectly stimulate the platelet aggregation and this will lead to uh, hypercoagulability and that will lead to thrombosis now interesting thing is that that in uh, pnh there is thrombocytopenia partly due to the less production and partly due to the consumption uh, which happens due to this complement activation but and that is thrombosis so thrombosis despite of uh, thrombocytopenia so that is a feature of uh, pnh now third finding is or third common manifestation is deficient hematopoiesis so there are three manifestations hemolytic anemia venous thrombosis and deficient hematopoiesis actually that will lead to pancytopenia all the three cell lines are affected and <clears throat> you have decreased uh, rbc production so aplastic anemia you have decreased wbc production especially the granulocytes so granulocytopenia and thrombocyte or platelet count are also low so that is thrombocytopenia so as i earlier mentioned there is a thrombosis with thrombocytopenia so to summarize uh, the three common manifestation of pnh are result of mainly three things first is uh, hemolytic anemia second is venous thrombosis and third is uh, decreased or deficient hematopoiesis now <clears throat> let us see that why this rbc are getting over sensitively uh, <coughs> to the complement activity so we know that rbc has a cell membrane and this cell membrane is usually having uh, two components or two factors or two proteins which are there in this cell membrane and those two proteins will actually protect it from the complement action so cell membrane if it is deficient in these factors and these two factors are daf dk accelerating factor and mirl also know cd59 so this two if they are deficient they will increase the sensitivity to complement for example mirl cd59 normally inhibit the mac complex or membrane attack complex df also uh, uh, inhibit the complement by uh, destroying the complement but if these two are deficient then what happens that rbc are more liable to the complement mediated destruction so sometimes this can also be asked that which are the proteins or which are the factors uh, which are involved in pnh so answer is daf and mir lcd 59 The another aspect which has been uh, so many times asked uh, in case of uh, PNH is LAP score. LAP stands for leukocyte alkaline phosphatase. Uh, it is an enzyme uh, which is seen within WBC and whether it is increased or decreased based on that 
we can say that uh, it is which condition for example in case of pnh the lap score goes down and same is true for cml chronic myeloid leukemia but if it is increased then what are the condition for example polycythemia increase uh, rbc so in that lap score is very high uh, leukemoid reaction so that is just like leukemia uh, but not leukemia we will do a video on that also infection uh, that will also increase the lap score so pnh will show you the low lap score now moving to the next segment now we know that paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria it is actually a acquired clonal disease and it is associated with abnormal complement regulation and there are three main features hemolytic anemia venous thrombosis and deficient uh, hematopoiesis you can uh, say that it is a, actually a triad i would not like to use that term but let us see that these three are the main features that is hemolytic anemia venous thrombosis and pancytopenia now uh, what happens is that this venous thrombosis can result into various things depending on at which site this thrombosis is happening for example if it is happening in hepatic veins then it may lead to the bud uh, chiari syndrome uh, if it is happening within the spleen it can cause splenomegaly if it is happening uh, and splenomegaly is partially also due to the hemolytic uh, anemia because the uh, one and ton rbc they have to get uh, destroyed by spleen and workload of spleen is very high if brain veins are involved so cerebrovascular thrombosis uh, can be seen so and pancytopenia we have already discussed that rbc production has been decreased so aplastic anemia uh, sometimes myeloproliferative disorders uh, are also associated with pnh now what could be the treatment for pnh now first of all blood transfusion has to be given but along with that you can give androgens and glucocorticoids now these androgens how they work they increase the hemoglobin level and same goes true for uh, glucocorticoids or steroids so androgens and glucocorticoids to increase the hemoglobin level along with the blood transfusion